All right, we are going to walk through the gradebook calculator project step by step. The first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to take a look at the top and there's just a bunch of walkthrough topics and what we're going to learn about specifically in Python and also in Scratch. And, you know, you look at the project at the very end, you might be tempted to just go right to the cal gradebook calculator project, but it's important to start at the very top and work down. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Replit. I want to say Replit.com in the browser. And I'm going to click on Create in the top left corner. I'm going to find Python. Just type in Python. Python will show up. And then you title your project. I'm just going to call this Gradebook Calculator Whoops. Project. And today's date, I believe it's the 21st. Okay. And then click create REPL. Now, this will take you to your area where you're going to write your Python code. And while that is booting up, I'm going to go ahead and click on my gradebook calculator project. I'm going to grab all the topics that we're going to talk about. I'm just going to copy them. And I'm going to bring them on over here. Now, We've talked about like single line comments in the past where you can just write the hash symbol and then type whatever you want afterwards. And it just it seems a comment. The computer doesn't take any action on that line of code. Well, you can actually have a multiple line comment. And I'm going to do that by having three quotation marks. Okay. And I'm using double quotes. You can use single quotes too. It doesn't matter. Uh, and I'm going to paste all this in between the triple quotation marks. Now, everything inside of here is just a multiple line comment. So if I were to run this right now, nothing happens. And it just assumes that that's a comment, something that needs to be taken care of by whoever's looking at it. So everything above line 10, 10 and above, don't worry about. That's just going to be my list that I go down, checking through things, making sure that I'm accomplishing all of those things. And just even a review from last time, we learned about the print function and learned that if I type print and then my parentheses inside of their quotation marks and type in something inside of there, in this case, I wrote hello, and I ran it over here on the right side, my console, this is what shows up. It says, hello. And then we also learned about the input function. And I could ask a question and say, like, what? Maybe I'd say, what is your name? And now the, the main thing I saw from last project was some of you forgot to actually store this as a variable. So if you write a variable and let's say let's call this name i could name it whatever i wanted in this case i named it name and i signed it the value of whatever the user types in so i input i write input function and write what is your name that is then collected and stored in a variable called name all right and then let's go ahead and just print all this out together and we talked about concatenating strings so I can say hi, and then if I add a space, and then I add them together using the plus symbol, hi, space, name. Notice name is not inside quotation marks, or else it would just say name. The name, the variable is just typed out because it will remember whatever the user typed in. So if I run this, it says, hello, what is your name? And I'll say, Mr. Danza. It says, hi, Mr. Danza. And we went through that in our last project. We also talked about comments. And, and let's say I just want to not worry about this anymore. Like I wrote it, but I don't want to delete it. Maybe you can look at it later. I'm just going to put a comment. I'm going to comment out all this code, okay, by putting that hash symbol there. So now if I were to run this, nothing happens because it just sees it as a comment. And what I'm going to do too is I'm just going to push this down below. So that way 
um, it's not in our visual sight. I'm a very visual person. I like to see things. And sometimes when you look at something, you might wonder how that's connected. It's not anymore. So I'm just going to push it off the screen. See, it's just hanging out over here. We can talk about that later. All right. So first thing I want to talk about are arithmetic operators. And some people might call it mathematical operators. These are the symbols that we, were, that we will use in the Python programming language in order to actually perform these operations. So if I'm thinking of addition, right, let's think about that. So let me, let me rewind. First, let me come up with two variables. Um, let me create a variable called x. I could have named it whatever I wanted. Let's assign it the value four. And let's also come up with a variable y. It's a common um, use in mathematics, right? And I'll assign it the value of two. And then I'll come up with a variable, I'll call it total. And total will be x plus y. Now plus is addition, that plus symbol, okay? That is addition. And then let's print out the total. So I'll say print, I'll type total inside of there. So I have x is assigned the value of four, y is assigned the value of two, and then total is assigned the value of x plus y. In this case, that would be six. And then I print out the total. So when I run this, it should print out six, and it does. All right, so if I were to then change that, instead of addition, if I want to do subtraction, it's just the minus symbol. And I run it for minus two is two. Then for multiplication, you're going to use the asterisk, okay? The asterisk in order to multiply. So four times two would be eight. If I want to divide, I would use the forward slash x divided by y. Four divided by two gives me two. Now, this is weird. It gave me 2.0. Now, the why behind that, I can tell you about later when it makes more sense. But do you know that the data type that we received and were operating with before was an integer? And now we've returned a float, meaning a number with a decimal. So just interesting. We'll talk more about that later. Um, we'll talk how to round numbers even later that have a decimal. Rounding isn't always best in every situation, but um, we'll, we'll talk about that later. That's division. Let's say I want to have four to the second power, right? So four, and then like a little two up above it, like raised to second power, four times four. I can do that normally, like some of you might think to do this, but that's not actually the right symbol. You would use uh, a double asterisk. Okay, so x to the power of y, 4 to the second power, which is 4 times 4, should be 16. There you go. Yeah, 16. Now, the modulus symbol is a percent symbol, and I'll tell you what the modulus is. When you were in third, fourth grade, I think when you first learned how to divide numbers and go through, you used to divide and you used to stop once you got to the decimal point and you would write remainder two, remainder one. It was before you learned long division. And that is also called the modulus. So really, if I take X modulus Y, what that means is take X divided by Y. So four divided by two is two. But what's the remainder? What's left over? And in this case, there's no remainder, meaning there's no decimal. So you can use the modulus in order to see if there's a remainder. If the remainder is zero, then you must know that it is an integer. So the remainder of how many are left over, I don't know, let's say I change this to five, right? Five divided by two. Uh, and then what's the remainder? the remainder would be one because it would be two point something. In this case, the remainder would be one. 
So that's the modulus symbol. We won't use it very frequently, but I still think it's important to know. All right. So let me just go ahead and comment out these lines. Let me go ahead and just put it. Well, what's going on here? And add the hash symbol there. Okay. And I'm just going to go ahead and push those down as well off the screen. Don't worry about them later. Uh, you can include blank space in your program in Python. It's not going to do anything. It's not going to mess anything up. So like all the space here. Um, it's not good to have like a ton of space. And then like if I'm actually writing a program right now and just randomly skipping around, there has to be some sort of, I guess, cohesion and standard that you're abiding by. But that's what I'm doing for this right now. So now rounding. Let's say I have a variable called grade. And let's say your grade at the end of the quarter is an 89.5. Now, an 89.5 actually on your report card will show up as a 90, and it's because it's rounded. And anything 0.5 and above gets rounded up, and everything less than that gets rounded down. So let's take a look. So if I have 89.5, and let's say I want to round it, what I could do is I could type in round. And round is also surrounding in parentheses the number. So I will round 89.5, store it into grade, and then print it out. So let's see what happens when I run this. I get a 90. Okay. If this was an 89.4 and I were to run it, it prints out an 89 rounds down now. So I think that's important to, to note. Um, also, if I were to just take out round here and run this, I get 89.4. But let's say instead of rounding it up here, if I were to round it out down here, round, and then still put grade inside parentheses, that works too. It does the same exact thing. When it comes to storage or where you want to store it, maybe it is more useful to um, do it outside of uh, the actual print statement. So that way it's stored for later usage. But we'll go ahead and use this here. If I were to round grade, I could have done it this way too and run it. I get that. One last way I could have used it, right? Maybe I just create a new variable altogether and call it rounded <laughs> and it's equal to whatever the grade was and I round it and then I print out rounded in the end. That's just another way of doing it. Um, if I were to change it to 89.5, rounds up to a 90. If I were to change it to, I don't know, 70, 74.9 that rounds up to a 75. So it doesn't matter where you put uh, the round, but if you wanted to keep that gray there and just have a separate variable called rounded, you could have done that. Those are three different ways that you could have used the round function. All right. And I'm going to go ahead and comment all of this. Maybe I'll take out all of these lines right here and just push it all down. All right, I'm just going through one example at a time. The code we previously wrote is irrelevant here. All right, so round. And what about absolute value? So absolute value is how far away a number is from zero, whether it's a negative or positive number. You think of a number line, right? And the number line moves left to right infinitely. And if I have a number on a number line, how far is that number from zero? And if I'm able to use that here, I can say, I don't know, maybe I have a variable called X and I assign it the value of negative three. Now, if I were to, let's say I just, whoops, let's say I just print out the absolute value of X. 
and go ahead and run this, I get three. Now notice I use the abs function. Okay, it's absolute value. I typed in A, B, S. I had an open parentheses, a closed parentheses, and I just put X inside of it, right? Once again, just like in our previous example, I could have used absolute value. I could have just done it up here, right? And said, what's the absolute value of negative three? Stored that in a variable called X and printed it out and ran it and still got the same number, okay? If this number changes, maybe it's eight. What's the absolute value of eight? It's eight. It's eight digits away from zero. All right. Or not eight digits, eight uh, places away from zero. <laughs> anyway, that's absolute value. All right. Um, we've already talked about concatenation, but I just want to show you an additional way to add things together. Let's just say I have a variable called name and I assign it Mr. Danza. And then I have a variable called school and I assign it the value of AACS. And if I were to print this out, right? I could say print, whoops, I could say name and then plus school. All right, and let's go ahead and run this. And that concatenates the two strings together. I have a string uh, and I've stored it in a variable called name. I have another string. I've stored it in a variable called school. I printed it out in order to add both strings together. I use the concatenation symbol, which is a plus, okay? Now I could have also used a comma. You can use a comma in this too, because if I run this now, notice it automatically adds a space. Mr. Danza space AACS. Okay, it's important to note because in if I'm using the plus, I would have had to add a space here and then add another plus and do that. And that can become annoying because that's extra typing. It's a little bit longer. So once again, if I were to comment that out and instead just wrote it like this, this does the same exact thing. So there's multiple ways of writing this code. These two lines right here do the same exact thing. All right, so you can use a comma to concatenate strings as well. Okay, let's go ahead and just use the name again example. I'll say Mr. Danza. And let's say you wanted to find out how many characters are in this string? Well, you could use the length function. So if I were to print out the length of the name, notice I have this len function and then have a surrounding it parentheses. So right here, and then that is then surrounded by parentheses of the print function. If I were to run this, it tells me there are nine characters in here. Now, let me say Mr. Danza is a teacher, right? It's 22 characters. And with the shorter strings, you can count them yourself. But what if you have like a really, really, really long string and you just collected all this information? You want to see how many characters are in it. You can use the len function. Okay. So that's what you would use. And we're going to use this. In, um, actually here in a, in a minute, we're gonna use this while adding something else that we're gonna be talking about. Um, let's say I want to print out, let's, I'll just keep this here. Let's say instead of printing out the length, let's say I wanted to print out all of that in all uppercase. What I can do is I can print name and then use the dot upper method. Now notice, this dot afterwards is called the dot separator. And there are some methods that exist for strings that we will talk about that allow us to manipulate that and kind of change it up. We'll talk about it more in future weeks. This is just a very brief introduction right now. We're not even gonna need to use it for this project, but it's cool to know early on too. Uh, so if I were to take this, I take the variable name and then say dot upper 
open and close parentheses. That's just a method that I'm using. If I were to run this, it says Mr. Danza is a teacher. Now that's something very weird that I would go through. Uh, I don't know why I would put that in all caps right there, but um, that's how you would take anything in a string and convert it all to uppercase. Let's say I wanted it all in lowercase. I could use the dot lower method and run it. And it's just in all lowercase, Mr. Danza is a teacher, all right? So that's the dot upper and then dot lower methods. It takes anything in a string, converts it all to uppercase or all lowercase. Now, let's say I wanted to only print out the very first character in my string. So in this case, I have a string called name and it says Mr. Danza is a teacher and the very first character is an M. You can use something called indexing and it involves square brackets, okay? So when I'm using square brackets, I can go ahead and inside of here, type in a number. Now computers start counting at zero. So if I'm looking for index zero, I would type in zero. And if I run this, notice that I get M. Maybe we cut out is a teacher, right? Uh, but notice when I ran this, I got M for index zero because computers start counting at zero. So maybe I write a comment down here below and just show you the way the computer will count. It will count this as zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So whenever there's a string, the computer counts the very first character is index zero. The R would be index two. The period index three, or sorry, uh, the period, the R would be index one, the period would be index two, and so on. And I wrote them right below each. So if I wanted the capital D, that would be index four in this case, and it prints out a D. And that could go on all the way 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, all the way continue. Um, and let's say index eight should be the very last character in here which is a lowercase a. All right, so in this, if I were to, I don't know, let's say I were to have a really long string, Mr. Danza, uh, I'll say is a teacher and also coaches soccer and softball. If I were to write all that and leave it as is, I could go through and count each index and figure out how many um, characters are in there, or I could use the length function. So if I were to find, let's say I want to find the very last character of a string, the very last character. In this case, it would result in L. But let's say I don't want to count all of that. Well, if we remember, we learned about the len function, which determines the string length. So in that case, if I were to type in len and then inside of there type in name, it should give me how long name is. We already had an example like that. We did that. That's nothing new. But now we're putting it inside a name. Now, here's the catch. When we counted the characters in name, we didn't start counting at zero. And it's important to note this. Because if I were to run this as is right now, I get an error and it says index error string index out of range, meaning we had a range of what we were looking at and we went out of it, right? We're looking at certain numbers, but we went over. That's what it means. We went over in this case. So if we're looking at this and thinking logically, why would this be an error? Well, this name is a certain number of characters. When the computer starts counting how long this string is, it starts counting at one because it gives you how many um, characters are in the string. It's not giving you one less. When we're using indexing, indexing starts at zero and then counts up. So let's say there were actually 10 characters in a string. The length would give me 10, 
but the index would start at zero and only go up to nine. So 10 compared to nine means that I would actually have to subtract one from the length. Okay, so the length minus one. And if we were to run this now, it works and it gives me the last character. Mr. Danza is a teacher and also coaches soccer and softball. And maybe I put a period and say he also teaches AP computer science. And now if I were to run this, it tracks it. I didn't change any of my code below that, but it tracked it and it said, okay, the new last character is an E and it printed that out. So you found the length of the name and you subtracted one from it. Okay, I also have one last thing that I want to mention here. Let me go ahead and put this in a comment. Okay, we're gonna use something in this case called in operator. And this is gonna result as either true or false. It's gonna tell me whether this is true or false. So let's say I have a string and I'm just gonna call it um, random, um, random letters. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and start typing random letters. All right. So those are my random letters. Uh, and let's say I wanted to see if a certain letter is in there. So if I were to type inside of quotation marks and say, let's say, is there a L? in let's say l in random letters okay and let's go ahead and just print out is there an l in random letters and if i run it i get true right so somewhere in here there's an l now let me see is there a p in random letters False. Of all those random letters I typed, I didn't type P, um, which is interesting. I just type randomly. But you can look for searches too, like if you're looking for a certain word and say, hmm, is there a Danza in here? In the same way you'd hit like Control F or Command F in order to find something. You can write this and say, is there a Danza in this huge document? And we run it. In this case, it says false. This is how like your email search works, or if you're searching a Google Doc um, or whatever you're looking in, even a PDF document, if you're looking for something specific, you can type it in, it'll take you right to it. All right. And that is using the in operator. All right. So if we're looking back at the gradebook calculator project, if I scroll to the bottom, uh, it offers directions in nine steps on what to do for the project. Um, the first step, it says, write two gradebook calculator projects, one in Python, one in Scratch. For this video, I'm only going to make one in Python. It's pretty intuitive and easy to move through in Scratch once you know how to do it in Python. But at the same time, if you have questions, then let me know. So it says one in Python, one in Scratch. And these are some like guidelines of what to do. So I'm going to do that. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take all of this stuff. Oh, I'm going to take all of this stuff and delete it. All right. So I'll start from the, I'll start from the beginning, right? Nothing's here. And it says the computer will welcome the user. Okay. So I'll welcome the user and I'll say print. And I'll say welcome. And I've accomplished that very first step. Welcome the user. Cool. Um, B, it says the computer will ask the user to enter five different grades. The user should enter a grade zero to 10, the maximum grade being 10. So I'm gonna ask the user a question. Uh, and the way I do that is using the input function. And I'm just gonna say, enter a grade. And maybe I'll call this one grade one. And if I'm, if I go back, it says 
it will ask the user to enter five different grades. So check this out. I can just copy all of this. That's grade one, grade two, grade three, grade four, and grade five. Now I have to change the variable name or else just overwriting the variable over and over and over again. I don't want that to happen. So I'll say grade two, grade three, grade four, and grade five. All right. So it will ask all this and store it. So let's see. The computer will ask the user to enter five different grades. The user should enter grades zero to 10, the maximum being maximum grade being 10. After the user has entered the grades, the computer will calculate the percent average. Okay, so we want to add up the five grades that were entered. So I'll say total is equal to grade one plus grade two plus grade three plus grade four plus grade five. We're adding up all the grades, okay? And then it says divide by the possible total possible points. In this case, the total possible points is 50. Okay, so um, we will maybe have a final grade. I'll call this final grade. And I'll take the total. I will divide it by the total possible points, which is 50 in this case and multiply by 100 to give a percentage. So the reason why you would multiply it by 100 is if I just, let's say I just printed it out as it is right now. So if I just ran this, it says enter grade and I say, so it's out of 10. So I'll say like nine, 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 nine. That would give me a 90%. Well, first, I guess I have another problem to take care of before I take care of this one. We want to make sure that when we go through and we're accepting the user input, we, we it comes in as a string. We need to explicitly cast it as an integer. And I wanted to wait until the end to show you that error because I felt like this is an error that many of you have that you forget to explicitly cast it, right? So if I go ahead and write int, and then hug inside the int, I hug the input function. I can do that. And I'm just gonna copy this and the quick fix for it, paste. I'm gonna highlight it and paste, highlight it and paste, highlight, paste, All right? So it says int input, enter a grade. And if I were to run this, um, one of the things that Let's see what it ends up saying now. Enter a grade, nine, 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 and run it. I get 0 0.9. And I don't want it to be 0 0.9. And that's why I would have to multiply it by, multiply by 100 to give a percentage. So I'm going to divide by 50 and then multiply by 100. So now if I run it and let's say eight, 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 eight nine, I get an 82.0. Okay, maybe I'll run it again. I'm just typing it. Say I got a four on it, nine. Say I got a 10, a six, and an eight. I have a 74%. Okay, so um, I've multiplied by 100. Once a percent average has been calculated, the computer will display it to the user. And I can... Uh, I can go through and leave it as is here, but if I wanted to say something like your final grade is, I could write something like this, cast this as a string and also write it like this. So now if I was only to do invalid syntax, so I have to use the concatenation symbol. Um, enter a grade, let's say nine, 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 nine. Your final grade is 90%. Okay. So you could do something like that if you really wanted to. You would then have to cast it back as a string, or 
the other example, let's say I just comment that line out, right? If I were to just go through and just print the final grade, this works too. I'll accept this. No, let's say you get all everything right and you get 100% in the class. You can do it like this and this line right here, or you can also do it this way, right? So maybe I'll even just say, there's many different ways. Your code doesn't have to look exactly like mine. It can be whatever you want. It could say, enter your first grade, enter a second grade, enter a third grade, enter a fourth grade and so on, or enter another grade. It can say whatever you want. It doesn't have to look exactly like mine, but I was able to complete this in nine lines of code. Okay, this project was completed in nine lines of code. Um, once the percentage is calculated, the computer display, I did that. It says, you are encouraged to add on to the project beyond the project specifications if you would like. So you can add on to things if you want to try things out. Um, you can do that uh, if you want to make it look nice, if you want to you know, welcome the user in a nice way rather than just a welcome or maybe ask them what their name is. Uh, you can add whatever you want onto there. Um, it just says you're encouraged to do it. You don't have to do it. You're encouraged to do it. And then finish the rest, answer the questions at the very end and submit your project, okay? And that is the Gradebook Calculator Project.